Hey everybody, Paul Solins here saying hi from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I'm a solution architect at DocuSign and I wanted to speak to you about one of the core elements of our CLM platform, which is our attribute model. Attributes give you a way to store vital information from your agreements and then to put that information to work. Key components of our CLM platform like our search and reporting capabilities, like dashboards, and like our party view, which gives you a view into your relationship with certain counterparties, all of those elements are driven by attributes. So let's take a look. Here we have an MSA stored in DocuSign. And along the left, you'll see a tab labeled attributes. In this tab will appear all of the attribute groups and the attribute data that are attached to this particular MSA. This first group, the CLM document details, represents an out of the box and standard model that's provided with DocuSign CLM. Here you'll find core data points that are pretty ubiquitous across our entire customer suite. Everybody wants to know the type of agreements that they're looking at. Everyone is interested in the value and key dates around the agreement. So this standard CLM document details group provides a, a boilerplate for all of our customers to start from and drive some key out of the box reports around things like expiration and renewals. On top of that, all of our customers have the ability to generate their own unique attribute groups to capture the data points that are vital to running their business. In some cases, that may include things like uh, auto numbering a contract number, categorizing things by the line of business, or capturing something like the current status of agreements so that you can have reporting that drives vital information that you can use on the day-to-day. -day. As we capture information in these attribute groups, we can have multiple groups that allow us to really get granular and filter down the information that we're looking for by document type or any sort of category that's in place. The attribute information that you see here can be filled in and adjusted by users, provided they have the right permissions, but it also might be something that is filled in and driven by process. Things like this status here is something that a user is not adjusting, but because there's a defined process and agreements typically going through, we can automate that inclusion. Even AI comes into play here as there are portions of this data model that can be filled in leveraging uh, artificial intelligence. So now that we've looked at how the attributes serve themselves up in a document basis, Let's look at the administration side of things for a moment. Attributes are something that are accessible from an admin perspective. So if you have the right permissions, you'd be able to get to this attributes tab from an admin. Managing attributes in DocuSign is an administrative task. So if you have admin rights, you'll be able to get to this attributes page. The attribute page provides a list of all the attribute groups that are configured for this environment. And clicking into the group name will provide you a view of all the attributes that are configured to go with this group. So this list of attributes is going to be included against every agreement for which the contract attribute group is attached, either manually by a user or automated as part of a process. Adding new fields is easy. And you have a number of distinct data types for which you could create each field. So if you need to store a string or you need to store a date, we have specific ways to, to, to approach each of those. Things like status, which may one come from a controlled vocabulary from a dropdown, uh, can be defined here as well. As well as an, an additional points, like whether or not something's required or read only. Oftentimes we don't want the status to be updated unless it's gone through the proper gates in the process. So that's a spot where we can control that only workflow can write to this field and ensure that people aren't changing things when they shouldn't be. Okay. So we've looked at how attributes are attached to an individual document, and we've taken a peek at how those attributes are configured. Now, let's take a look at the attributes in action. Let's start with reports. Reports provide a way for you to pull back any permutation of that attribute information that is useful to you on a day-to-day basis. For example, here we've got a report of all the MSAs that have some definition of non-standard language. Now, these reports are accessible through reporting directly in DocuSign. They also can be exported in a number of different ways. But let's look at editing this here for a moment to see what went into configuring this report itself. 
From this view, you can see on the left that there are a number of filters that are driving what information is going to appear in the report. Things like a date filter exist, but also the ability here to start to tap into attribute information, document attributes, and select from the specific terms that are captured. And this is gonna be really context aware. So in this instance, if limitation of liability is driven off of a standard dropdown list, it's gonna know, right? So in this instance, we just want it to be not empty here. But if we wanted to be specific and say, we just want limitation of liability to equal non-standard or custom, then we can start to tailor this. Dates as well as something else that, that is context aware. So in this instance, we look for an expiration date that exists. But if we wanted to, we could work off of a custom date range or a rolling date range that says an expiration that's coming up in the next 90 days, for example. These filters can be added uh, indefinitely so that you can get as granular as you want in terms of generating these reports that you want back. So this will help us define what data is driving the filtering of the report. And on the right here, what we'll be able to do is control how that report looks. So we do have the ability to use any of these document attributes to group these. So if we wanted to group everything by a specific governing law or a liability tag, we can do that. And in addition, this icon here will allow us to customize the columns, giving us access to the full breadth of all the attribute information in order to generate this report. So from a layout perspective, we may want to have a report that is concise and only contains a couple of core items. But if we were looking to export a detailed report, we could customize that to include any and all of the items, uh, columns that exist in the broader attribute model. And we can organize how they appear by order and inside the, the format here. In addition, we can filter things to, re to exist inside of a certain range. So if we wanted to just have, for example, agreements that agreements that had a value that was in a certain range. So we had a value. In this case now we know it's a number value, so it's going to say between X and Y. So we can do between a zero between 100,000 and 20 million in order to capture just our big ticket items. So those are reports. Reports can be saved and, and, and copied and duplicated. There's a lot that we can do from a report perspective to enable you to get at the information that you need. Now, those reports often make their way into dashboards. Dashboards are a highly configurable part of the platform. From a dashboard, you can create your own individual view as an individual user inside DocuSign or you can create team or organization-wide views that take advantage of a number of different widgets to present key information. Um, as a day-to-day -day user, I might be looking for my task inbox and reports for uh, certain documents that um, uh, are, are for my key clients, um, or I might be looking at recent documents. I can configure a view that works for me, but dashboards can be also rolled out for different teams. So contract teams may be looking at things from a higher level and want more reports that can provide them not only uh, tabular data, but visualizations of agreements that are in certain status or things that may be standard versus custom. These dashboard views are highly configurable and one of the key elements that goes onto them are reports. So in terms of surfacing the information as opposed to having to hunt for reports, um, we can present them to users when they log into the system. Another thing to note here is that the data from these attributes and these reports is also highly portable. So whether we're talking about exporting report data directly to an Excel file or programmatically integrating the data from DocuSign into another system of record, those paths all exist and are taken advantage of in various ways by all of our customers. Uh, and, and the attribute data that's being retained inside DocuSign is a vital piece of transporting that across other systems of record. The final thing I want to talk about is the ability to view things from a counterparty perspective so that you can see centralized in one location the entirety of your contractual relationship with, a, another, with another organization. In this example, we can see all of the agreements that are attributed to this counterparty all collected into this counterparty view, which not only centralizes the visualization into the relationship with Abbott Kutch, 
but it also has the ability to demonstrate relationships between agreements and amendments and addendums. And also can surface key information like whether or not MSAs are active or whether there are key obligations related to any of these agreements. All of these views take advantage of the fact that there is metadata that's captured against this agreement. This MSA for Abbott Kutch shows up in reports around MSAs, but it also shows up on the party view because of the tags that exist here. This attribute information, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes requires manual intervention but oftentimes is a function of uh, capturing it in some automated manner, whether that's leveraging AI or the workflow engine that's driving agreement processes. These attributes provide an incredible place to store structured information that then can drive action across your organization. So hopefully this gives you a good overview into how important attributes are inside the DocuSign CLM solution and how our customers take advantage of them to get vital information out of their agreements and in front of their, their teams in a way that's uh, useful to them on a day-to-day -day basis. Until next time, this is Paul. Thanks for listening. Bye.